Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a locus problem. So these problems are called locus problems. You're going to see what they look like. We're going to be finding z values for which this equation is satisfied. So we have argument of z minus 1 equals argument of z plus i and we're going to be solving for z. Now, what does argument mean? You'll hopefully remember from lecture videos, if you haven't seen them, check them out, that when you plot a complex number in the complex plane, you know that that's going to be represented by a number or a vector, and then you can kind of think about the angle that it's going to make with the positive real axis. And we can call that theta, and this length or the distance between this z and the origin is the modulus or the absolute value of z. We could also call that r. And as you know, the complex number can be written as either, either in standard form a plus bi, or you can write it as r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. And from here, we get something very interesting, which is going to be very helpful for us. If you compare the real parts and the imaginary parts here, you're going to notice that b is equal to r sine theta and a is equal to r cosine theta. And if you go ahead and divide these equations or expressions, then r is going to cancel out and you're going to end up with tangent theta equals b over a. Now, you could also evaluate cosine and sine theta because that's going to give you a better information about the quadrant. So the quadrant is important and pay attention to that as we go through the solutions, okay? So tangent theta is equal to b over a. That's an important concept that we're going to take from here if our number is basically a plus bi. And theta is the argument of z, of course, right? So how do we use that information? We have an equation that sets two arguments equal to each other. Argument of z minus 1 equals argument of z plus i. So how do we know which z values are going to satisfy this? Are we going to test all the numbers? No. Here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to replace z with a plus bi. That's the name of the channel, right? So now this becomes argument of a minus 1 plus bi. And on the right-hand side, since this is going to be a plus bi again, we're going to get argument of a plus the quantity b plus 1i. So the real part is changed on the left and the imaginary part is changed on the right. But now they are equal. So we can basically say that, hey, what if they're both equal to theta? Then we can start talking about tangent theta. This is the critical part. So we're going to be using tangent to solve this problem. But there's going to be a couple of different issues along the way. OK, we'll talk about those later. And if you look at tangent theta for both of these numbers, tangent theta for the first one, in other words, we can kind of write it as imaginary part divided by the real part instead of writing it as b over a because it's not always a and b, obviously. But in this case, it's going to be b over a minus 1 from this one. From the second one, the tangent theta is going to be b plus 1 divided by a. Again, the imaginary part divided by the real part of the number. Okay, if you call this number z, in this case z is a little different, so let's go ahead and call them uh, whatever, some number. Okay, doesn't matter. You get the idea. Now, this equation is going to give us pretty much everything we need. So let's go ahead and work it out. Cross multiplication, right? a times b is ab, and then we're going to multiply a minus 1 by b plus 1. So it's kind of like funny because you're thinking of two numbers, two real numbers, such that when you multiply them, the answer does not change if you decrease the first number by 1 and increase the second number by 1. Make sense? So those are the types of numbers we're looking at. So let's go ahead and simplify this. Distribute. You get AB plus A minus B minus 1. AB cancels out, leaving us with something like A minus B minus 1 is equal to 0. You can write this in so many different ways. A minus B equals 1. B minus A equals negative 1. B equals A minus 1. So on and so forth. So there are so many forms. And let's just write it as B equals A minus 1. What does this represent? This represents complex numbers 
whose imaginary parts are one less than their real parts. Make sense? So something like z equals 3 plus 2i, or z equals square root of 3 plus 1 plus square root of 3i, right? Uh, the real part is bigger. Or can it be something like 1 half minus 1 half i? Because, again, uh, 1 less than 1 half is negative 1 half, right? Wait a minute. Can we check if these are correct? Yes, for example, let's use 3 plus 2i. The, our equation was argument of z minus 1 equals argument of z plus i. Of course, you don't have to always check your answer, but I want to make a point here. So if you plug in the first one, like this one here, you're going to get 3 plus 2i and 3 plus 2i. So the first one is going to give you the argument of 3 plus, I'm sorry, 2 plus 2i argument of 2 plus 2i, and the second one is going to give you the argument of 3 plus 3i. And as you know, they're equal because they're both equal to pi over 4. They're in the first quadrant, we're all good, right? Okay, let's go ahead and do the second one. If you replace z with 1 half minus 1 half i, subtract 1 from it, and then argument of 1 half minus 1 half i plus 1i. So, 1 half minus 1 is going to be negative 1 half, so it's going to be argument of negative 1 half minus 1 half i. Is that equal to, I have to put a question mark because I don't know if they're going to be equal, 1 half plus 1 half i. And this is definitely not true because this number is in the first quadrant, this is in the third quadrant, they definitely have different arguments. So where does this problem come from? Well, here's the thing. All the solutions are going to be on the same graph, which will I'll describe in a little bit. But not all points on that graph are going to be solutions. So what is that graph? So we said that b equals a minus 1 kind of gives us an idea. But if you go ahead and do the following, instead of using a plus bi, I wanted to prefer that because it's the name of the channel, but x plus yi is going to give us a more coordinate-wise idea, uh, coordinate-ish. So you replace a with x and b with y. So you're going to have a new equation, y equals x minus 1. Make the replacements, and then this will make more sense. On the coordinate system, this is basically a straight line with a slope of 1 and has a y-intercept at negative 1. Make sense? So something like this, a line that goes like this, right? But not all points on this line satisfy the equation. Why? Because of the issue with the quadrants, okay? So let's go ahead and look at this problem from another perspective to get a better idea. So since argument of z minus 1 is the same as argument of z plus i, I'm going to go ahead and subtract this on the right-hand side and start with 0 equals argument of z plus i, z plus i, I don't know why this isn't working, plus i minus argument of z minus 1. Now, one thing to remember, if you divide two complex numbers, you subtract their arguments, remember? So this can basically be written as the argument of a quotient. So that kind of gives you a new formula with arguments. Hopefully that makes sense. And then after multiplication by conjugates, I can go ahead and multiply by the conjugate of the denominator, which is going to be, in this case, z bar minus 1, because 1 is the real part. It's not going to change. And then uh, at the bottom, I'm going to get, if you multiply uh, a number by its conjugate, you're going to get the absolute value of that number squared, and this is supposed to equal 0. But don't, don't worry about the denominator. As long as z does not equal 1, we're good. Numerator must be 0, so z plus i times z bar minus 1 is supposed to be 0, which means that, two things, again, replacing z with x plus yi, you're going to get the following. The argument, and by the way, I forgot to write the argument here. The argument is supposed to be 0, not the whole thing. So the argument of the following is going to be 0. x squared plus y squared minus x plus y. This is the uh, z plus i, the real part, plus i times x minus y minus 1. That should look familiar to you. And this is equal to 0. Now, two things need to happen for this to work. The imaginary part needs to be 0 because you're talking about the argument being 0, so you're going to be on the positive real axis, not on the negative 1, and the real part 
Well, the imaginary part needs to be zero because you need to be on the real axis. And the real part is supposed to be greater than zero because you have to be on the positive side. Otherwise, the argument is going to be pi instead of zero. Make sense? Great. So now, the second one, the imaginary part, gives us what we already know. y equals x minus 1. The first one, the imaginary, the real part, x squared plus y squared minus x plus y is greater than 0, kind of gives us an interesting condition which we can complete the square by taking these two things and then just adding one fourth. That becomes x plus minus 1 half squared. And by adding another one fourth, this becomes y plus 1 half squared. And the sum of one fourth and one fourth is one half. So we get this interesting inequality, which means that we kind of need to exclude the section between 0, negative 1 and 1, 0. So it's the same line, but you kind of need to exclude this part, and everything except for that is actually going to be a solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.